fourth and last, and perhaps it will be a little clear even if I go around with many things because they are all related. Wow. I will have to write something about or I don't know, but it's a really long, long, long to explain and long to clarify because they are really complex uh, subjects and uh, I feel around that it's not that clear about and how to work about. Also because we relate very often to ancient methods or excellent ancient methods that they don't take they can't have the idea that we were broken by life, this muscle. So they ask to do some kind of things and they start from the starting point in which you have enough elasticity. When you want to do satiric vocalization and you can't, normally it's because you don't use properly this opposition. Usually in my experience is that this is blocked. And you pretend to take it that. And you don't allow yourself to be stuck into the idea that you will not sing because you don't see and you can't perceive the sustain working. Because that you can perceive working a bit more than this one. That's the question. This is lower, this is faster. This has some external muscles that helps it. This has some external muscles that sometimes they help, not always. The greatest part, it's totally internal. And it is totally internal when you, don't, you can't perceive. That's why we are so scared, because we have nothing. We, we do something and we have to wait and we have to see the voice appearing. And in this something, if we act in the middle, we are nearly always doing with the incorrect opposition. So we are screaming or we are putting too much weight. So we will not have that, we will have something else. And since singing is uh, to make the diaphragm work in first, then to put the sound on. I wanted to explain better that. I told you of um, Montserrat Caballé. If you look at why she's doing that, because the sustainer not only puts the pressure, but puts the position. It does put what we call the vocal position. And the vocal position is also related with what you know as the lowering of the larynx. And also there, there is a misunderstanding. The lowering of the larynx, is it exactly the same thing of saying that the larynx must be low? Mm, think about. And think about because also in that I agree with Lily Lemon. And we are not so many saying clearly that thing. When we go to the high notes, the larynx must come up because they're high notes and the high notes they don't want the same position of a lower note why because we'll, you will have a higher note which the position of the weight of this note because we call positions where we must have the larynx perfectly balanced for that note not everybody has the same positions and as i was saying before previously you can have a slight difference and a slight possibility of moving into the positions. And this is the style, not only of the different styles of singing, but also of the different style of the interpreter. We can work on that. This will become really very subjective. And I'm not on the school of being perfectly balanced all the time. Yes, of course we can. It can be a good choice. But it can be also a good choice to understand how we work. And without risking nothing, to work in a little more subjective way. But to do that, we must understand that there are some fundamentals. So you want to de develop your sustain, you think that you must have a low larynx. So the sustain will not put what? The correct position of the note. And to have a lower larynx and some pressure, you will use everything you have to put a pressure and eventually you will have your high larynx with that note it will be a screaming and can be very risky and it is very straining or you will have too much pressure on your vocal folds with too much weight that is also very scary and very straining for the voice so what we used to do and what we do in vocal technique and what Montserrat Cabea was doing she was teaching the girl that 
it is not just the pressure to put the note. It is the sustain that puts a position inside, a pressure down. Why? Because it's a position. And when you get there, immediately after, you will find an opposition. And this is the pressure for the high notes. Why do you feel that you press so much when you go to higher notes? You have to stretch more. You have to get more. And you have to remain still while this is pushing. So the question is, to develop the sustain, you have not only to understand how the sustain works and to put it with an opposition of the, everything that puts down, but you can also have to train and have to understand that you can put before the sustain and then the sound. To hear that, you can also hear uh, Whitney Houston quite young. I think it was 1983 when she sings Tomorrow. And she does exactly as we teach to do in the Canto Technique. It is, we don't mind if initially we are less precise, but we are putting the correct sustainer. Because the correct sustainer will create the correct position. And will create after the possibility of putting back this. And she did that very well. If you look at her later, when she was less elastic, and to me she gained a lot in that, because she gained to be more pop just in her sound, in her color. And she did that with the rib cage. We started doing that with the rib cage. She, I don't think she used a lot. She really put a lot of the back. I think that she, she found that color with the rib cage with a very intelligent way of of using it and it was using it with a great sustain under and look at her because she worked on the sustain for a long time but you don't have to become like her the color can be you don't have to have all this sustain you can have a little less because it depends on the on the style in which you want to sing and what you have to sing so to develop sustain it's a it's a tricky question because sometimes you think that sustain it works directly without doing nothing else round. We have to do round. And we have to accept also that lowering the larynx is not the low larynx. It's the fact that we put a position and the sound to be properly done, we will do many, many times and nearly always, basically always, in lowering the larynx. And that's why when you have really a good position, you feel the note a little higher in, into yourself. And it is when you sing that you correct the pitch. Because you will get with a higher position of the larynx. And if you want, you can sing there. It can be very nice, but you can't really pronounce. And you will do that with a sustain. It is so some to do that. And it's really, really, it's quite amazing sometimes. Because the effect of that pitch is perfect. It's something that's... You don't have the idea you can really have in the voice because you usually put that on the opposites but you can you can manage to do it in another way that's one of the things i love in voice but also you put a slightly higher position that just the sustain will put inside you and this pushing that can be also just the pronunciation or the movement of the larynx or a little kudoglotis as we call it we put down and putting down, we'll find the opposition of the sustain that, you, that will remain in there. And you will have your sound and your intensity. Perhaps you're more confused, perhaps you start seeing some clearer. I will do some workshops on my, in, in here, in London, a couple of times a week, on sustain and on practically things. And I will put some tutorials with exercise practical to do that. And also my exercises made to make this more elastic and so to make you find the sustain. That is, the, that is one of the things that my students sometimes think is magical. We work on that and it appears the sustain and I say, but we didn't work on the sustain. Yes, of course we did work on the sustain. We were rendering the sustain possible. But I'm learning also in yoga that you do something to arrive to do the opposite. Probably it's exactly as voice. We work in that way. It's our body. But it's quite amazing. See you next time.